was pretty fun, but it was hard work. Well, I learned about how the lens is curved and what makes a telescope work, where the lens are positioned, and what kind of lenses you use, like 364s and a parabola. Were you surprised it worked? No. <laughs> you expected it to, didn't you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> sure. Okay. Paul Schaefer, New Center 4. We have a slight problem in that the sun's not out. So it's kind of hard to take silhouettes or backlit pictures uh, when we don't have Steve a good light. Steve Skipper, so what Pat Neff, do, Middle School switch. Industrial Today's Arts Teacher. What you're gonna do next week. Okay, let's go to work. This is a class in photography. He also teaches drafting and electronics. Okay, you're off and running. Which one, David? Zoom. To a visitor, it may look as if his students are going in all directions. Well, they are. Oh, Working in groups, today. students are covering all okay, steps okay, in photography, and somehow, Skipper manages personal attention. Women in sports. Okay, that's great. I enjoy it very much. I like working with the youngsters, and uh, here at, at Pat Neff, we have an atmosphere where we can uh, have a good time, and everybody does their job and learns. It's quite enjoyable. It's a good picture. Where did you shoot that in the gym? The 34-year-old teacher has been at this school all eight years of his teaching career. He has a bachelor's degree from Southwest Texas State University and a master's from UTSA. Skipper's efforts in the classroom have been recognized by his peers who have named him the Teacher of the Year in the Northside School District. Congratulations, Steve Skipper. Paul Schaefer, News Center 4. What would be a better place to hold an exhibit on an 800 million mile trip into space than at the San Antonio Museum of Transportation? Encounter with Saturn. This is a collection of color photographs of that planet and its moons taken by Voyager 1 last fall. It includes many photographs that have not been released to the public until now. Museum director Joe Zwatsky said this encounter with Saturn was produced by the Oregon Museum of Science and Industry in Portland and made available through the Association of Science Technology Centers in Washington, D.C. It's a mind-boggling exhibition uh, looking at the colors and all the other things we've learned from Saturn, the, the rings that surround it. It's just uh, photographically, it's a beautiful exhibition, and scientifically, it's, uh, I think it's a very important exhibition for us. San Antonio was selected as the first city to display the exhibit during its two-year nationwide tour. Encounter with Saturn will be on exhibit seven days a week in the Museum of Transportation at Hemisphere Plaza through June 27. Paul Schaefer, News Center 4.
This is David Pace. Uh, this is David Pace. Hard at work at his desk. Morning, Pace, when he's not hard at work at his desk, well, you'll find him well, relaxing at his desk. His special office chair thing. serves as a recliner. Pace designed the chair himself. He's better known as the Picante Sauce King. He founded the Pace Picante Sauce yeah, Company in 1947. Yeah, and when long, hard hours and pressing yeah, business yeah. matters fatigued him, Pace discovered he could relax a few minutes on a slant board and become rejuvenated. That inspired him to design the Pace Chair, a sturdy office chair and a recliner. We secured the services of a patent attorney, and he made a search and found that this was new and novel, and we secured a patent on it. At that time, I got very interested in the chair along with the food business. But the food business grew so, and I just set the chair aside. Pace sold the picante sauce business recently and now concentrates on making and marketing his chairs. He's already attracted out-of-state business from his first national ad in this month's issue of a health magazine. Well, it's time for Pace to get back to work, so we'll say goodbye, uh, or <laughs> perhaps good night, David Pace. <sighs> Paul Schaefer, News Center 4.
Your relatives may curse you out, but you got a little smile because you know in whom you have believed and you are persuaded that he's able to keep that which you've committed unto him against that day. Hallelujah. Somebody said, well, do you have to be so emotional about it? Do you? You know? This is a new Center 4 special report. The Stowers Building Falls. Here is New Center 4's Mike Cavender. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our live coverage of the demolition of the Stowers Furniture Building downtown. Well, it, our vantage point today is from the National Bank of Commerce on the roof, so we're well above the Stowers Building, and in a moment we'll be showing you that building, and we'll be able to see two sides and the top. Uh, we're about five minutes away or so from the demolition. Well, it's about 33 degrees up here, not nearly as cold as some of us thought it would be earlier today. The winds are calm. It's actually a good day for an explosion like this. Uh, no wind to carry the, uh, the dust uh, far from the site. So about 400 people are downtown now, gathered all along the river walk and uh, behind the barricades. The police have barricaded two blocks. Uh, around the Stowers building, that of course for safety measures. Let's turn our cameras around right now and take a look at uh, just what the scene looks like downtown. A little history on the building, you'll see come down in just a couple of minutes. It is 70 years old, built back in 1912. For more than 50 years, it housed the Stowers Furniture Company. That until the firm moved to the north side, the result of its downtown business falling off. The property is now owned by the Frost Bank Company. And once that building is demolished, the lot will be cleared in preparation for construction of Two Frost Tower, the second Frost Bank building. That's expected to be finished in 1984. Believe it or not, it will take only six seconds to level this building. It is being done by the implosion method. That's where the dynamite charges will be set off in sequence so that the building collapses in on itself. 240 pounds of dynamite are being used. They will be set off electrically in a series of 12 separate explosions. That's two every second. I'm told, though, that our ears probably will not be able to pick up all 12 separate blasts. While the wrecking crews have spent weeks preparing the building for demolition, the explosion was to have taken place last Sunday. Some of the blasting caps needed didn't arrive in time, so the event had to be postponed until now. And actually, the weather is much better this week than it was last. Store windows around the area have been uh, boarded up. A plastic cloth has been draped over the bottom couple of floors of the Frost Tower. Some of the street area right around the Stowers building is now covered with soil and sand. That happened yesterday. That's designed to protect the streets and the utility pipes and the cables underneath. We were a little worried about rain and uh, high winds, but they wouldn't have affected the wrecking company's plans. They were a little worried about low cloud cover, and that's what would have held up this explosion. That's because if the clouds were too low, the shock waves would have bounced off and uh, possibly caused some damage to surrounding buildings. But that's not the case. It's a beautiful day, and as far as we can tell, everything is going along as planned. After this is over, you'll see uh, what will be 400 tons of debris on that lot, debris that the wrecking company will begin clearing up later this morning. Now we're about two minutes away now. You might remember that the last building implosion in San Antonio was back in June 1978. That's when the old Elks Club was demolished.